Welcome to another episode of Eat Smoke Drink. Today I'm going to, well, first of all, today this is a special episode. This is a special episode of Eat Smoke Drink because this is my fifth dram of the day. So it's a special episode. I'm a little bit loose. Um, no. The, today I'm reviewing the Ardbeg Galileo. So it's a little sample bottle because it's the last of the bottle. So I thought I'd just put it in a... Um, a small sample bottle right at the top so it avoids oxidation because oxidation does kill whiskey when it's on a little bit left, okay? So the Ardbeg Galileo is a fabled, fabled um, bottling of Ardbeg. It is a benchmark for what a good Ardbeg is. Um, it is ex-bourbon cask and ex-marsala cask. Not ex-masala cask, so there's no curry in it. It's ex-marsala. Okay, so just making sure, not masala, marsala. Just in case you're wondering. So, touch. <clears throat> so, the Ardbeg Galileo has forged a reputation over the years for being one of the best, if not the best, Ardbeg special edition bottling. Is it true? Well, let's let's see how we go. I'm using my um, special blender's glass, aka butt plug. Let's get nosing. You get that waft of peat straight away. Waft of peat. I'm sure people have reviewed this bottle before, but. I thought it is a special bottle. I haven't reviewed it yet, so I will review it um, and give you my take on it. Viscous smelling. I haven't even tasted it yet, but it smells viscous. It smells syrupy. I don't know how to describe that except for it just smells like thick brown sugar syrup with smoke. It's got a slight floral nature to it as well. Almost like rose water. It's very herbal. I'm getting rosemary, licorice. And a very umami flavor. A very umami flavor like uh, the iodine and the kelp. The iodine and kelp. And meat. I'm trying to think of what meat. Not a prosciutto. Prosciutto is too subtle. Like a copper. Like a copper with black pepper. Like a copper with black pepper and pork fat. That's what I'm getting from this. And all those descriptions might sound weird in context to a drink, but they're all described in the best way possible, right? So I'm not saying that it's a bad thing. It's fucking glorious. I'm getting fresh, fresh leather. When you go to a leather store, you know, when you're about to, when you go to a leather store, you know, like everyone's been to a leather store, just before you buy your gimp suit, you know, you go to a leather store and you go, mmm, this is fresh leather. Oh yeah, you know, you can christen that leather yourself, you know, it's not second hand, it's not been soaked with someone else's face gimp sweat, it's your, you, you can christen it yourself, it's fresh leather. That's, I'm getting that, fresh leather. And black pepper is quite prominent as well. But surprisingly, the peat is not as heavy. Now, I don't know what age it is. I don't really care. Um, you can Google that yourself. Um, but the 10 is much more peaty than this one. This one, the Marsala cast must have just tapered off some of that peat, the sweetness, or maybe the age, maybe a bit older than the 10. Who knows? But it's definitely not as you know, sharp peat as the 10 year old that you get. And right in the back, and this is really weird, I'm getting like, just imagine getting a stainless steel pan, you put some butter, you let it burn a little bit, and you chuck strawberries in there. Low heat, just simmering in butter. 
That's what I'm getting. Not that I've done that before. But I imagine that's what the smell would be. Anyway, let's get sipping. Mmm. Wow. There it is. There it is. There's the ad big I know. Robust rubber, robust iodine, robust peat, but so much more viscous, so syrupy, so sweet. A hint of dirt, a hint of pine needles, a very mild burn of jalapeno in the back of the palate. The smoke just wafts through my palate. I can taste leather. I can taste leather. Like a fresh leather, like you put the gimp suit on, you've got the zip. You can taste that leather before you open the zip. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, maybe not. Anyway, yeah. So, absolutely, absolutely stunning. There's so much going on though. Orange marmalade. Slight bitterness in the back palate. Great bitterness. Like a lemon rind bitterness. Mmm. Burnt butter, burnt sugar, leather, rubber, bonfire in the distance. Not a hot fire, but you know, like when you put some sodden wood on a fire and then it kind of kills the fire a little bit and you've got this thick smoke. It's like that. Not that high heat fire, but like a smoky fire. Like, you know, like you're a cast away like Tom Hanks on Island and you got a signal. That kind of fire. You know, you put some green leaves on there, you know, Survival 101. I've seen Man vs. Wild. You gotta watch that shit. Mmm. Absolutely delicious. Absolutely delicious. That is just fantastic. So, is it worth the hype? Now, I, I forget what ABV it is. I, I'll put it up on the title. It doesn't really matter. Um, it's a great ABV. Whatever it is, it's a great ABV. Um, is it worth the hype? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I mean, unfortunately, when it was first released, only 180, 200 bucks. But now you're paying probably four, five hundred, six hundred dollars for it. Unfortunately, that's just the way it goes. When you've got an ad big release, one, it's like. Adbeg is the Elon Musk of whiskey, right? Adbeg is the Elon Musk of whiskey. Um, it's got a cult following. It really does. It can, you know, it can do no wrong. That's not true. It can do a lot wrong. But um, what frustrates me about Adbeg is that they come up with this, and it's just so frigging good. It's so good. And Adbeg, as you know, um, has been for a while owned by LVMH, Louis Vuitton Mode Hennessy. And they are the master of marketing. I mean, if you can sell shitty vinyl bags for 3,000 bucks, you can sell anything. You can sell anything. It's a, it's a, I'm not even mad. I'm actually impressed. It's amazing. But this, this lives through the hype. This lives through the hype. This is bloody excellent. For the price, mm, you know, that's, that's something to argue because obviously everything has a diminishing return. The price you're paying for it now, some might argue it's not worth it. I think it's worth it. I actually think that some of the, like as an example, you're paying $300 for the Ardbeg 19. I'd rather forgo two bottles of Ardbeg 19 and buy one Galileo and drink it half the speed. That's what I would do. The Ardbeg 19, I think is overhyped and, you know, not as good as it could be. Um... And this, this one here, I think, is miles better than the Ardbeg 19. You know, the new limited releases, the drum, the scorch, and all of that. You know, yeah, they're not bad, but for the price you're paying for them, you know, they're probably six, seven-year-old whiskeys at best, and you can taste the new make. This one, you can't. This one is just such a, such a well-aged whiskey, such a delicious whiskey. So my verdict, definitely worth the hype. Definitely worth the hype. Absolutely stunning. Absolutely delicious whiskey. Um, no doubt about it. Ad Big Galileo. Gives, it gets a thumbs up from me. It gets a thumbs up from me. Until next time, make sure you eat, smoke, drink. Thank you for joining me today. Um, and what do you think of the Ad Big Galileo? I'm sure a lot of you out there have tried it before. Do you think it's worth the hype or do you think it is overhyped? Um, 
and please give me context as well do you think it's over high for the price you pay now or the price you pay then um, because I think it's actually worth the price you pay now but you know everyone each to their own so hey you know it's all a matter of taste thank you very much and I'll see you again next time cheers